The law is whatever the people on the jury declare it to be as guided by the golden rule of, quote, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do, un do to you, do ye so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. King James Version, Matthew 7.12. Need more proof? Quote, it may be maintained, at least plausibly, that the admission of California into the Union, quote, on an equal footing with the original states, quote, of itself operated an immediate transfer of the property in the navigable, in navigable waters to the federal government, so that the property of the state was momentary. However, this may be, on the 13th of April, 1850, the legislature of California had passed an act, quote, adopting the common law, quote, which reads, quote, the common law of England, so far as it is not repugnant to or inconsistent with the Constitution of the United States or the Constitution or laws of the state of California, shall be the rule of decision in all courts of this state. Quote. And that's published in Statutes 1850, page 219. This is important, and we're going to come to this later. The validity of the acts of the first legislature of, of California, and of course they had to do this right away because the form of law that was in existence in California at the time was Spanish civil law, or of rights acquired under them even prior to the admission of the state, has never been questioned. Certainly when constitutional, those acts became valid and in operation for every purpose from the date of the admission of the state into the Union." Quote. And that's from a court case in California, Lux v. Hagen, 69 Cal 255 in 1886. I personally witnessed that quotation, so I have faith in it. The codes of California were never lawfully enacted as they did not meet the constitutional requirements. And here I'm going to show you, um, once again, more proof. We go back to my favorite, the Constitution of California from, this is right out of the, legis the um, legislature publishes this, and this is the 2009-2010 edition. And here we go to page 102. And this, in spite of the fact that it was clear that there was no authorization for applying the common law until it had been adopted by the legislature. Footnote 10. Do we see that? Footnote 10. And then we go down to footnote 10. And what does it say at footnote 10? April 13th, 1850. So there's your verification that the common law was created in California, as I stated in... Lux versus Hagen. California were never lawfully enacted, as they did not meet the Constitution requirements. The Code of Civil Procedure, for example, claims to have been enacted in 1872. The plaintiffs hereby declare that it must be noted that it does not state its origin in the manner of Statutes 1872, Chapter such and such. This is significant because every valid statute of California has a reference to its orig origin in the manner of statutes, the legislative year, chapter, the number. This method began with statutes 1850, chapter 1, and has continued since. This is due to the constitutional mandate found at Article 5, Section 19, where it states, quote, The Secretary of State shall keep a fair record of the official acts of the legislature and executive departments of government, quote. The mandate is in the 1849 California Constitution, as the codes were originally allegedly enacted in 1872, and the fraudulent 1879 Constitution hadn't been enacted yet. It was fraudulent because while the 1849 California Constitution was voted upon by the citizens of California, the 1879 Constitution could only be voted on by United States citizens, 14th Amendment citizens, the subjects of the U.S. government created by the 14th Amendment. The 1879 Constitution also 
was never accepted by Congress at the time, so it's void. Everything in public policy applies to the employees of the state and not without consenting to it by the people of California. Oh, and by the way, you're probably not a person, so be wary of that term, because when we look up the word person in Black's Law, it can be a corporation or a trust. Now, who would think of a person? When you say the word person, you're thinking of man or woman. Man or woman, not trust. I wouldn't call Bank of America a person, but a corporate entity can be a person in legal terms. So here we're going to look at this book where what you need to know about the California Code, where it makes the claims and substantiates the fact that the code was never lawfully enacted. So we're going to go to Charlotte A. Lewis, Administrative versus Frank H. Dunn, Judge 134, Cal 291 is the court case. Quote, petitioner contends that the act in question is void because violative of the following parts of section 24 of article 4 of the state constitution. Quote, every act shall embrace but one subject. Which subject shall be expressed in its title? And we go down to the bottom here where you can see that conclusion is that for the reasons above stated, the all purposes and is inoperative, the said act of March 8, 1901 is unconstitutional. This was a revision of the code. Is unconstitutional and void for all purposes and is inoperative to change or in any way affect the law of the state as it stood immediately before the approval of said act. Let the alternative writ be made absolute. So what they're stating there is the revision of the code was unlawful because there was there wasn't one law that was voted on, right? I mean, they're going to vote on a revision of the code. But the same is true when the code was originally enacted. Because when the code was originally enacted, it just enacted the code. The code of the penal code, the political code. There was four codes that were enacted in 1872. The law said that you could only enact one thing at a time. Let's say you have 350 people voting on whether they want to pass an act, and the act has a dozen different things. How can they all agree that all 12 things in that act that they agree with? Maybe they only agree with nine of them. Well, they see how it's not fair to enact something unless you're voting on one thing at a time. That's the law. The Constitution has a requirement. They didn't follow the constitutional requirement. And in truth, they didn't actually enact the codes as law. So anyway, they stated their conclusion that it was void. So if a revision is void for not stating one subject as it stood immediately before the approval of said act, then what about the original act enactment? It's the same thing. It was void because the legislator, legislature voted on an act, the title that included hundreds of parts if and not stated as one subject in the title and voted up, and didn't vote upon them individually. The penal code, civil code, etc. are all unconstitutional and were never lawfully enacted. I subpoenaed the Supreme Court for a legal determination of the code being constitutional and they refused to honor my request. Open a case and go into your open or closed case and get a subpoena ducis tecum and serve in person the Supreme Court and the Attorney General to get a declaratory judgment and or to testify, the, the Attorney General can testify, to the lawful enactment and constitutionality of what you are being charged with and see what happens. An actual subpoena ducis tecum and this is, you go to the clerk of the court and they'll stamp it and they'll you know, you, you have uh, 60 days from the date that it's stamped to serve it. And this is an order to appear and testify or to produce documents. So you can go to your, um, you know, go serve the Attorney General and order them to testify that, that the law you're being charged with is constitutional.